Okay, what a lot of you may not realise is that I used to be a photographer by trade and photographer by qualification, that's what my degree's in. Um, I was working as a photographer and in the photographic industry and photo labs and so on for over 20 years. And during that time, I had a succession of cameras. Now I began in the old days before autofocus, before digital even. Um, I mean, I can remember the first digital cameras I used, and that was when they first literally came out. Um, massive, expensive Kodak things that were the worst point shoots I've ever had. Anyway, we're not going to talk about digital, we're not going to talk about modern, we're going to talk about my old cameras. And I'm going to start with this one, which is a proper classic, because this is the oldest one that I currently own. Although not for much longer, because I sold it last night. So, you've all seen... The films set during the wartime in the 50s with the press with their big cameras and the flash guns people like Ouija in New York with their speed graphics and crown graphics and other sort of five by four press cameras so this is my 1947 model Graflex pacemaker crown graphic five by four press camera you may not recognise it at the moment because it's just a square black box. Something you might find after an aeroplane crash. But that's because it's all packed away. So it's nice and small, it's compact. This is like the things you have on a tripod with a hood over your head and so on. A big studio camera, but made portable. You get a massive negative, about that big. So they would contact print these in the dark room for speed. And the quality was fantastic. So we'll begin by opening it. And then you've got to start to see what it looks like. Now, they have this in different areas. On mine, it's the top left side. There's a very small bump here, which when you press in, that opens out the front. Okay. Snap that into place. Okay. Here, you've got the infinity stops. That will stop it moving too far. So, you turn across that switch, pull it out to wherever you want it. You can go past the stops if you want to do close up because you've got bellows for it. Okay, you can go there. You can go there. If you put the stops across, that will stop you there, which is your normal amount. For the sake of lighting, I'm just going to bring it a bit forward. That'll just make it a little bit easier to see. And then you just lock it off again with a switch. That's the first thing. Now, you have a useful hand grip on the side here. Okay, a little strap which is adjustable. With this, you can look through the camera, through this viewfinder here, and you can see roughly what you're going to get. In terms of focusing, you look through this, the KLARTS rangefinder, which is bolted on the side. Now with that, as you focus the camera, which is done with these little knobs at the front and back, your image moves up and down until it matches. Okay. However, if you've got a bit of action going on, you haven't got the time to you haven't got enough time to be squinting messing around like that. So you then go to your frame. Okay, if I can just separate these two with your central pop-up flip-up bit. So this is a big frame viewfinder. So you can literally look through here and I can frame and I can see what I'm going to get. So you're sitting there filming me. I've got mm, about a centimetre on either side, centimetre above on my, on my frame. Now, if I look here, similar, similar, but I can frame you with that. Okay. That's that. That's the front of the camera. Now on the rear, Okay, you have got on this particular one the graph lock back. This is the film back, okay, which you slide your sheet film in behind here. Okay, and then that flicks down to hold it down. However, if you use it in a studio, you can flick it open and you can see the ground glass screen, okay, which you would focus on in the studio to frame things properly. Okay. Probably won't pick it up because of the darkness here. So that has your camera being possible for use as a studio camera as well. It will sync with flash. 
weighs mm, about four pounds, 4.3 pounds, something like that. So it's not a lightweight camera, but it's not particularly heavy either. We'll fold that back up, click it into place. Now, like I said, to focus, you turn these wheels here at the front, okay? Now, this is the lens. Now, this is my lens, okay? This is the best of the bunch and was a standard one. It's the Kodak Ektar 127mm f4.7. Okay, so the maximum aperture is 4.7. Now, if you go down to one of the fast lenses like the f2s, 2.8s that you have nowadays, or the 1.4s or f1s that I used to have even on my Nikons, um, you end up with such a narrow depth of field, which reduces massively when you go for a larger negative. So having a, a, an f2 lens on this would just be mind-numbingly terrible because nothing would be in focus. So you set your apertures on the lens here, okay, and you set your times as well. So the apertures are down the bottom here, from 4.7 right round to f32. Set it where you want, okay. We've got some flash. Um, attachments there. You've got shutter speeds here and you've got shutter speeds here. Okay. In this instance, I'm going to put it at one second so that we can hear the sound because it is rather delicious. Proper clockwork mechanical. And you cock the shutter here. You can release it here if you like. Okay. There's also an attachment that you can buy that can go in there that then has a cable off to, to do it like that. But you've got another release here, a shutter release. So if we're all sitting nice and quietly, just have a listen to this. That's Wurschsprung durch Technik, if ever anything was. We're going to do that again. Would you like to come really close so you can really hear it? We'll go out of focus, but it will sound good. That's just delicious. Okay, so that gives you a rough idea of the camera itself. Okay. We'll have a closer look at the lens because everything is modular on this and comes apart to a degree. So, flicking up the latches, top and bottom, I can take out the lens and lens board. So, I'll show you. These are the latches I was talking about here and here. They're literally up, down. Okay, now here's my lens. I'm taking it to one side so we can see it better. If I cock it and put it on bulb, there we go. I should, this is another lens release here, I should be able to open it up. There we go, and we can see right through it. You won't be able to see me. If I hold it up to the light, nice and clear, nice and bright. So it's a nice large lens. Now this lens board is obviously interchangeable. You can get um, wider lenses, longer lenses, lots of different ones. But the, but the uh, 127mm Ektar was the standard. It was the best of their lenses. It was better than the Optars and it was... Uh, It was produced by Kodak themselves, and at the time, Kodak had the most advanced glass manufacturing in the world. This, is, this predates the um, Japanese glass that became the, the kind of thing. And of course, Germany, with all their, their very well-renowned glass, you know, the Zeiss glass and the Leitz glass and so on, they were just kind of stuck in... Uh, the ending of the Second World War a couple of years before when this came out. So, you know, you, you had this this problem of, well, I say problem, you, ha you had this possibility for other people to really be at the forefront of glass manufacturer, manufacturing and optical manufacturing. Now, Kodak had done a lot with the aerial cameras for the war, the war um, business. And, um, you know, they were first to coat lenses and so on. And, um, you know, so it wasn't until a few years later that you started seeing people like Canon coming out. Canon, of course, were the first people to make the lenses for the first Nikon cameras as well. 
Anyway, so we go back to here. So the graph lock back, there's various backs you can get for these. Okay, I'm going to remove the back now, so I'll have to turn it towards me. You need to just flick these little metal plates up, and then I've got to as you press down the knurled bits on the back here. So flick these out of the way, press the knurled bits there, just push down, and that slides out. Okay, so there's your ground glass focusing screen. Remember, this bit flicks open. So you look through there and you can focus your image through there. Hold that back down. So here we see the camera itself. We see the bellows, press down, we see the lens, so on. In fact, if I open it up again, pull it all out and remove the lens once more you can see just how how simple and basic this actually is as a camera okay so it's literally a box with bellows for focusing with glass to 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 focus on and with a lens to go through so it's all very very simple so i've taken the back off You've got various options for backs. Okay. This is an original right way double dark slide film back. Okay, right way with a the graph lock, right way with the Graflex um, brand. You've got your dark slides here. If I just take the clips off. So the dark side covers the film. So in complete darkness, in a dark room or in a dark bag, you would put your single sheet of five by four sheet film in there, then put your dark slide in, okay? Till it locks in place. Now, what it was handy to do would be to have one side colored and one side blank, so that you could, you could tell which side had been used. So then you would do the other side, you slide that in, and this would go under this back, under the graph lock back in place there. Once it's in place, you then pull out the slide, shoot your film, put your slide back in, job's good. Okay. I've also got So this is a Polaroid 545 land film holder. This allows you to take instant photographs, to check exposures, things like that. Not for party shots, you wouldn't really use a crown graphic for partying. So here you go, this is where it'd be exposed, that's that side. To load the film, you'd unlock the lever, and then, can't do this one handed. Let's see what we can do, see if I can do something like this. So unlock the lever and then you're going to flick this open like that, pop your film in under the rollers, blah de blah. Okay, so I've mentioned that the graph lock back is what the sheet film holder will fit under. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'll just lock that back into position. So, you flick that up, I'm going to do it one handed, get it positioned in smoothly, and then that has to slide into place, that's going all the way, and there you can see that's locked in place. That wasn't very central, I was popping it up or something. So you can see that the back is now locked in place on all sides. Okay. And that is how you load it. Now, if I turn this round, I'm going to pop this back now further so we can see it a bit better. So we've got the light on there. Okay, so I'm looking through the bellows and where the lens would be. Obviously, the lens would be here into the back. And this is where your sheet film 
dark slide is here. Sheet film is behind this black metal slide. Your lens is on and in place. You're all loaded, all light tight. You pull the sheet out. In reality, you do it a lot quicker than that. Okay. You pull it right out, out of the way. You would expose your film, click, then pshh, that's all done. And then you put the dark slide. Let me prop you up. You push the dark slide back in. Pull your film out. Okay. Your film back. And then if you're going to take a second shot, turn it over and put it back in. Snap it into place. See, it's got a locating sort of lug there. And same again. Let's pull out. Oh, let's make sure we flick up that holder. Pull out the sheet. Expose the film. Pop the sheet back in. It's a lot easier when you're the right side. And job done. And that is basic rundown of the Graflex Pacemaker Crown Graphic 5x4 press camera. One thing I haven't mentioned as yet, you also have a bit of tilt and shift possible, uh, possible on this camera. So we can undo that a bit and we can flick it from side to side or just leave it central which you would use for normal normal use okay we can raise it up I just undo these okay This will allow you to correct for converging verticals and what have you. It's, it's actually quite a versatile little camera. But let's say goodbye properly. Flick down the infinity stops. Bring this forward. And let's cock the shutter again. Have one last listen that delicious sound of a one second exposure on a Graflex Crown Graphic 5x4 press camera. Marvellous.